Hello everyone, welcome to the Immortal Break the Game Weekly number 11. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, alongside Simus. How's it going Simus? It's been a whole week. I know, it's exciting. I'm glad to be back, back to back. Thank you for having me, Dom. Well, I'm very glad to have you back. How have you been? I have... I've been good and excited when it comes to Immortal Gates of Fire, but unfortunately, in terms of my own health, I've actually been a little bit sick for the past week. Oh, um, well, don't and die. I, I, oh, okay, I mean, it's, I don't think it's that bad, hopefully. Uh, uh, hopefully. My, and my, my roommate who came back from a trip has a confirmed case of particular pandemic-like illness oh, that's going around right no. now. Uh, and oh, that sucks. I've had a fever, mild fever. Throughout. It, it, it's, it's mostly over now, but, uh, okay, yeah, good, because I, I, mean, okay, I, I got, I, like, I got, like, my voice got all messed up, I got dizzy for a couple days, I had, like... Oh, man. I, got, I was triple vaccine, too, and it was, like, I just, I still... It's just, it must have been, it would have, man, if I hadn't been vaccinated, I probably would have been in the hospital. Yeah, the no, get, get back, <laughs> like, folks. Uh, like the, I, yeah, can't imagine what it would have been like if I hadn't been. All right, so, we are... I mean, in terms of, like, the game, I'm so excited. Yeah. We, we had, last week, we had a 2v2 uh, event with... Uh, half of the current immortals updated, right? With their big That's right. presence reworks. And now we have all four immortals that show up on the battlefield in, in all of their splendor and glory, uh, ready to kick ass and take names. Yep, we got uh, Orzum and Zol joining Teapot Orzum and Mala. Yeah, so the, the gameplay effects themselves are a little bit TBD in terms of balance. However, these are the implementations that we'd like to see for the most part. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at the bracket real quick, folks. So we've got some heavy hitters today. Mixu, I feel like I haven't seen him in probably months by now. Uh, but for those of you who are historians of Immortal Gates of Pyre, he was very common in the pre-alpha events that we hosted. Uh, Magical, of course. Later, first seed, we have Walter Team, a.k.a. just Santa Claus. This is a one-man team. Uh, a lot of heavy hitters today, Dom. I'm excited. Me too. Walter, okay. Walter team is just Santa. Santa's, you know, like, Scruffy's obviously fighting them, so just for reference, but, yeah. Yeah, uh... Walter team being Santa, for, for those of you who don't know who Walter is, uh, go ask Santa in our Discord, which I believe there's a command in your Twitch chat for our Discord, right? There is. It's Immortal Discord. I'll just type it in now so it's easier. There we go. There we go. Uh, and we are just making sure that we can get everyone in the lobby. Thanks for your patience, everyone. And we will get the first match underway between Mixu and Outfox. So Outfox, for uh, those of you who do not know, has been making an amazing amount of content recently on our Discord, or, or posting to our Discord, but primarily like on Reddit uh, on, and YouTube and a couple of other sites. Really, really appreciate the initiative they've been showing uh, and, and giving Drago a run for the money in terms of like Sopley, right? Some of our most common uh, YouTube creators. Yep. Yeah, they've been. Uh, yeah, they have been. They've been going a lot. Mm -hmm. There's been quite a lot of people coming in for that. And yeah, Outfox has been doing quite a lot of like just their own play. And uh... anyway, let's go. We are. Getting yeah, we are in. All right. So Mixu versus Outfox. I will still give the advantage here in terms of favorites to Mixu just due to sort of historical context in terms of playing at a high level. He's obviously very experienced in a number of different games as well. Um, but Outfox is absolutely no slouch and definitely has been grinding the game quite a while. So uh, this will be exciting. Oh. Uh, I think we might need to uh, just wait a little bit on that though just to make sure everyone gets in properly. Uh, the Immortals that were picked were so fast, Omnic. I was actually looking at the bracket matchup, but I didn't get a chance to confirm uh, who everyone was picking. I believe it was Zol from Mixu, and I can't... I think it was a Jari for Outfox. So Mixu on Zol makes a lot of sense, then a Jari. Uh, Outfox has been an Orbson player, pretty pretty dedicated Orbson player for a while. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like Orbson... So last week we saw the major patch, right, which started with the uh, sort of rework of how we present the Immortals and how they play in the game. Uh, and Orzum got that, like, a couple days ago. So maybe he's just not feeling comfortable, Outfox, that is. Um, more comfortable on Najari, who, who's been around a little bit longer, maybe a little bit more practice for them. Uh, 
I mean, that's the uh, that's possibly it. It is still Karath. So if they are playing a Jari, it's not the biggest difference. Okay. Although now with the new changes to Orzum, man, that's just going to be... I mean, the biggest thing I'm think looking at is 25 power to drop a tower foundation. Like, you know those things that are on yeah, the map all yeah. over with very specific locations that have been yeah. made to be fair? No. Yeah, Orzum doesn't care. Orzum literally Orzum makes their own. Makes their own rules. Uh, there's a Yu-Gi-Oh parody I'm thinking of where Seto Kaiba says, screw the rules, I have money. Uh, okay, that's where that's, that's from. That's basically, yeah, no, that that's... That's not Orzum. Orzum has money, so he took it. Or he has angelic god powers. Oh. Well, it's a bit of a shame then that a Fox is playing Ajari today. <laughs> yeah, well, makes sense. Ajari incredibly powerful. Familiarity with the Karoth faction, like you mentioned, is good to have. Um, and yeah, taking a look at uh, early starts. First couple of minutes are typically fairly tame in the current metagame for Immortal, but nothing really out of the ordinary. Nah, both players going for their early expansions, both players going for early ether. Uh -huh. It's more a question of what happens after around the two and a half minute mark. Like, are they going to go for quicker units? Are they going to go more for just a fast tech? Um, looks like Mixie's going for at least possibly more tech focus. But, out fine. yeah, same, both sides. Honestly, both of them are very confident they can just hold out on building military units for as long as possible. Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, just due to the fact that the recent updates have shaken the metagame up so much, it's very hard to predict who kind of wins in the... Uh, really at every phase in the game, but even in that sort of late, more tech-sided matchup that we might be seeing in the future. That being said, though, the Legion Hall placed near the outer turret. Uh, and then, of course, Mixu has already responded, building his own unit production structure uh, and speaking of which would you remind us of the fairly significant change that happened recently how supply currently functions with oh, regards to where yeah. it was a couple weeks so, ago so for those of you who have been following for a little while you'll know that the way that production structures work is they will build in parallel every single unit of supply that they were able to produce every single production structure produces 16 mm -hmm. supply every single production structure could therefore produce 16 supply at, of worth of units at once. This is no mm -hmm. longer the case. That right. the 16 supply being provided for the to global total that remains, but that 16 supply production cap is now down to 10 simultaneously. So you can only make yeah, so... of, say eight bone stalkers, only five bone stalkers instead of five sapari. You can only make three sapari at once. You can still make five sapari in total or eight bone stalkers in total off of one production structure, but it takes two cycles. Gotcha, gotcha. So we'll see how that plays out right now. We've got five Bone Stalkers against the three Sapari. Maybe a good bait here, actually. Outfoxed, can he get any kills here? Of course, he is a melee against a ranged, but those Bone Stalkers are so squishy. The Sapari have their own little ranged tricks, too. No, the folks fire from micro is doing well. Oh. One of the Bone Stalkers so close to death does go down. So one Bone Stalker for one Sapari still advantage Mixu very slightly. But now Mixu yep. cannot advantage. really engage. Yeah, and of course the uh, pyre camps in the center of the map haven't really been taken either. Gets a little teep out there. Oh, doesn't get punished for it. I don't think so. Uh, so all said and done, Mixu with a slight advantage there. However, the map control, as it is currently with the reinforcements, uh, in favor of Outbox, and they may even be able to capitalize here with the uh, pyre camp. Uh, it does look like they have started and are going to get that no problem. But interestingly enough, look at what Mixu's produced coming up. Soul Foundry, Neuroscience. He's so got a, on the battlefield the right now. He's got Underspines in the center oh, of the map. Oh, they do! Oh, oh yeah. that's, if they're going for Resonant Tech, which Neuroscience Neuro, Underspine suggests, that is going to be perfect synergy. And they are! So yeah, Underspine, Resonant yep. with some Bone Stalker support is a total, like, total siege combo. Just walk up there, set up Rootway, use that for the extra range Wait a second, on the Resonance. The Pine Steel? Outbox gets this. Oh, no. Ah, Ooh, just barely gets it. Yeah, that's absolutely worth it for Outbox, though. Didn't really lose anything. They are I that much closer. One Sapari? It looks like... Yeah, it looks like that's the case. So one Sapari for essentially getting both fire camps uh, and the added insult to injury, right? That you actually snatch that away from your opponent. That's well done. 
That being said, what are we going for future tech? We do have a soul foundry coming up for Outfox, but nothing being built out of it yet. Be much more focused on getting their infantry up, which, to be fair, is fine enough at this stage of the game. I mean, the, the two residents mm -hmm. are here, so a question of positioning. They are not deployed yet. They're actually going to be intercepted. Uh, Outfox a... does catch them. Yeah, that was a free interception. And, and also the run by Going as well. to go for the commitment. There's a symbiote in this army. I don't even know what Mixu is planning, and I don't know if it's going to work. Well, unfortunately for them, their army has been locked down in this little choke point with Heaven's Z just being applied to it. So all the shields on top of that, this, these party are going to survive no problem on top of the run back in Mixu's base. Oh, boy. This is so well done by Outfox. The control on both sides of the map, able to pick up, defend, and then the run by, like you mentioned, doesn't actually take too many workers, but the mining time, Dom, the mining time, completely crippled at the moment. And more work, and the work is coming back a little bit too soon? Oh, That is yeah. automatic, by the way, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard to control. Resonance oh, are the resonance in up, the base. This The defense for at Mixu is online, but they already lost wow. a good few hundred alloy worth of mining time. And in the, meantime, is... in the meantime, Outfox is expanding. Yeah, well done there. Uh, one of the questions I had into this game was, Outfox, do they have the mechanics? I'm not quite sure how much experience they have in other RTS. I'd imagine, in general, they are particularly proficient at games. But compared to Mixu, who's such a superstar, uh, yes, you can win advantages in the center of the map, but if you can't keep up the actions per minute, you know, expand your base, then you're actually going to fall behind in the long run, but it looks like they're doing okay so far. But here, Mixu has a big army. This could be dangerous. No. Uh, Pyro once again. Gets it again? Oh, wait. Oh, Does no, no, no. Last, he didn't okay, there's last ancient getting to be. Oh, there you there. go. So, the what only, was that? Actually, once the party in Saushin, right? I, yeah, and that's where I'm kind of getting a little bit concerned because, I mean, mm. it's not so much even a question of. Because I actually prevented. Okay, sure, you got to have at least a certain minimum, but. It's more a question of tech at this point. With an army like this, yep. Pari Saushin, you know, the residents are going to start building up. They're going to start setting up and being a real problem. No, Heaven just... once again drops, which is helpful. A lot of shielding. Is it going to be enough, though? One of the residents. Mixu's army is so strong. That's exactly my point. That's exactly my point. Sapari are going down. It took a little while to take them out, thanks to Heaven's Aegis, but it's enough. Pari are completely wiped out. Outfox has no army left. Oh, yeah. Mixu's early tech timing push here is, is perfectly successful. Lost a couple yep. of resonance, Pirate but for, just... for everything. Yeah, the pirates really didn't matter at that point because Mixu's army was so much stronger, right? Not only did they have a little bit more in terms of total army, but the tech, the ability for them to place those blood wells down, set up their resonance, set up their underspines, just obliterating Outfox's army outright. And now, Dominic, we're near the eight minute mark, and I don't know if Outbox has a leg in this game anymore. I honestly would be very surprised if they find a way back in. They do have the economic advantage slightly. It's just getting into these resonant lines. The warden the warden is their one of hope. But even then they'll need a few of them, the bone stalkers do shoot up. If the air force are there. This man, this is just total This is like, hilarious. This is slow. it's like I'm so glad. I hate I hate to bring up StarCraft, but this is like if you were to take creep tumors and mix them with the Terran slow push. This is exactly what we're looking at right now. Oh my goodness! I, every time you see like in games such as these, you can see the player sort of personality reflected in their playstyle, right? And last week I was super excited to see Drago playing again, and this this week I'm so happy to see Mixu because ultimately Mixu just zero f's given has set up a sub base. Smack dab in the center of what should be Outfox controlled territory, and Outfox has no real way to counter this. Oh, it's just clogging Outfox's ex exit arterial. This is like this is leaving Outfox a single exit path through their third base to flank around, if that, but even trying to get. Honestly, it won't be too long before this moves over and gets close enough to the Acropolis, and the residents just start yep. taking it out directly. Yes, the slow choke. Maybe Mixu could just go for the quick rush, but why even bother? At this point, the security they have and the range on the resonance. There you see it in action. Oh, man. Evan, yeah, he just he wants to commit and defend. It's a little bit tricky. Got to give it a few seconds to get your get your barriers up. And 
Even without that, even with just the basic, it still got rid of a couple resonance. It's just, it's just, it's a couple more. not enough. There's, there's many, many more, that is. Yeah, and, there's, uh, like, that's, what, a third of them they're taking out, and most of them weren't even being actively used. And this entire time, Mixer is just keeping his economy going. His residents are in a range of the moat line, the flying sea bot just for insurance, and there you go, the second Acropolis just completely under siege. The third Acropolis as well. Four Wardens. Gonna get some kills here, but is it gonna be enough from Outfox? It's tricky. It's actually starting to push back a little bit. The Air Wars aren't going down quickly enough. That's one of the major threats. I mean, just about everything here does shoot up, so the Wardens... They are struggling, but they got a few resonance. They are providing some support for the Zephyrs to come in and eat further destroy the resonance. So the Wardens may go down, but they're getting tons of value. They're getting they're punching way above their weight here. They are, but the question is, is it gonna be enough in time? They're gonna try and fight the bone stalkers out, but the oh, bone no, stalkers no, no, are no, no. no! Oh boy, oh, and yeah, that was fine both of them taken down there. The base second base well. taken out. Both expansions actually about to go down, and Outfox has a couple Dervish up, but I don't know how they're going to fare against this line of resonance. And there you have it. Neither do they. So Mixu takes the first game. Simple yeah, GG not... from the players. Well done by Mixu. I mean, that was a uh, tale of two economies, right? One player was prioritizing the Pyre, and Pyre, for what it's worth, is an incredibly valuable resource. But if you don't have the army, which the other player was valuing, uh, you're just gonna get swarmed, and that's. It wasn't like a swarm in terms of like the the traditional like zergling style rush you might expect, but it was like the slow choke. Like Mixu got that inch, and then he took that mile. On top of the, like yeah, and just having the tech advantage too. Yep. The wardens were doing a good job. It was just unfortunate for them that they didn't have the numbers in time to stop the setup in the first place, and more importantly. Went off to fight Bone Stalkers. They were doing okay against the Aerobores and the Underspines. But yeah, the Bone yeah. Stalkers, no. The Bone Stalkers are going to be too good. I mean, credit to Outbox, too. I think had they maybe gone for a little bit of a different army composition instead of the uh, Sapari Saushin that we saw, they might have been able to make the comeback happen uh, or, or at least defend a little bit more effectively earlier and transition to a Warden sooner. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see how Game 2 uh, shake, shakes things up as we are going back to Lost Province. Are the... and uh, I imagine I feel like as far as swaps are concerned, immortal swaps we might see them probably not for Mixu. I think he's probably comfortable, don't really change what ain't broken. Plus, he's always been uh, particularly fond of playing Zol. Uh, not to mention for... that strategy, clearly, Mixu has thought that through. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Outbox, though, you think he's gonna stick with the Ajari here or maybe swap it up? I was expecting them to go to Orzum in the first place. Okay. So I do expect them to swap it up. Yeah, at this point, Orzum has had some pretty significant changes as well, but he's got some of the basics still, right? The Empire Unbroken to make a structure incredibly strong. Uh, he's got his pillar still. Uh, it was changed a little bit, and it's a little bit more expensive now, more in line with some of the other ultimates at 175 Pyre. Um, but for the most part, Orzum is still the Chad that we all know and love. Uh, so we'll see if Adapox decides to go for the swap or instead decides to stick nope. to something else. And yeah, it does look like he's going to be on a Ajari once more. Yeah, stick um, Ajari. All right. Which, to be fair, the Ajari play early on wasn't that bad. He actually got the initial pressure on the map. Uh, just a couple of suboptimal engagements, and then the army composition necessarily uh, wasn't necessarily in his favor. So... I expect the choice. It didn't work for him, but who knows? Game two might be his game. There are a lot of options for Ajari. But yeah, it's worth noting, Heaven's Eat... I mean, they've been practicing a lot, so they probably are aware of this, but Heaven's Eat just used to be the ultimate that would basically give every single unit a bunch of bonus shields. Like, mm -hmm. every single unit in the field would get a bunch of bonus shields. But it got switched now, where you summon Ajari... Or a teapot orzum because that's the current model, <laughs> and you basically get one unit to take a free hit every half second for ten seconds. Yeah, it's a ramping shield, right? Sorry, it's a ramping shield, right? It it's, slowly it's gets. A, no, it's a one hit. It's a one hit block. Oh, so really? Oh, shield, okay. The next hit they take 
just does no damage. But it, it consumes uh. the shield. So if you have units pop in with that, they'll basically take like a bunch of free hits. So especially with the high elf army, like the resonance are actually, then they will just take the free hit, move in, continue to do damage. And if a jar is still there, then they'll keep passing out little shields every half second. Okay, okay. Ajari's one of the. Uh, honestly, I think she's probably. Yeah, Ajari and Mala are probably my least played immortals anyway. But mm -hmm. even the update last week, I spent more time on Mala's Mala's change than uh, Ajari herself. That's fair. Yeah, Ajari's my second after Zol. Yeah, I'm a Zol fan too. <laughs> she's I mean, just. Who, it's who all the, the. I mean, oh, yeah, like, you're not wrong. Like,. I feel it's funny because Zol was the in, in order the fourth immortal that we created, right? And at this point, I want to say she's probably the favorite of the, um, at least like the elite competitive scene. Mm -hmm. uh, I think newer players typically do tend to stick to Orzum in general, uh, but I, I imagine all that changes after the updates. But like for me, I love Zol because she's cool. Her splash art really got me. I think that her playstyle, uh, Bone Stalkers. As well as just invisibility in general, I like assassin kind of gameplay. And then her ultimate reminds me of a particular champion League of Legends. So I don't know, Soul's cool. Yeah, if especially you like with the updates. I really, I, I don't know if we're gonna see Mixu go for it, but man, some of the new updates where it's just like make an area of the map where everything gets cloaked and then deals yeah. the damage. I mean, it did, oh, it did yeah. drop the ability where you could give. Where you'd apply double damage to units if they were stayed in an area for a while and give vision, but that oftentimes people just run away from. Like it didn't actually get the double damage; it was just a threat. So I can see why. Yeah, that, that mark was a uh, oh nice kiting there for Mixio. Also, did get the pyre, gets the teapot for his trouble. Did lose a little bit, but I want to say this is just still a slight lead for Mixio overall. It's it's a slight lead in terms of armor. It's tiny, right? You information. Got the, the yeah, the overall. teapots. The teapots are even. The Oh, never mind. No, they got a slight teapot advantage, too. They got both the Fox teapots. So information is also oh. in Mixu's favor. Well, was. Oh, but... let's see. Sapari so coming in to reinforce. Pyre camp being contested right now. Mixu does not have the army to fight this, but does he actually know that? Uh, he wants to kite back, but he's not really going to be able to stop this. He might even lose some oh. troops for it. Oh. Yeah, lost lost one. One. Uh, ah, yeah. lose another. Well done. More bone stock reinforcements coming in, but that pyre camp is going to be outfoxed. There's no way around that. I, Magical uh, in the chat mentioned something really important too, by the way, Dominic, which was that the splash effect of Siege of Resonance uh, does take away that shield, that barrier from You're Kevin's right, Aegis. yes. Yeah, because so, it is splash damage. Interestingly enough, it's not like a hard counter necessarily, right? But th that is like a soft advantage that Resonance specifically have against that one ability from Ajari. That is a great this shout out. Thank you, Magical. Yeah, so yeah, with enough resonance, it is going to be a problem. Even with Heaven's Aegis. That's a very good point. Ooh, okay. Bit of switch this time. Mixed going for early Icor? Just the one? Interesting. And uh, Outbox actually has already started we saw some of the uh, Dervish earlier. He's got a couple more in the army now. And he is building double Angelarian back at home base. Ooh, are they going to try to get... Yes, they're going to get Wardens in advance. All right, let's see how this works out. We haven't seen a lot of in-army hair. Ooh, big damage. It. Yeah. Can I get another uh, wave in? I think they can. Nice. Ooh, half the Bone Stalker's going down immediately. Yep, yeah, gotta respect the Dervish. They are fast, and that AoE cone is no joke. However, they can't shoot up. No one can shoot up. Outfox is nothing that can shoot up. They might, do they have Zephyrs on the way? They do. Well, they could, but at this point, oh, this is a pretty up. heavy commitment. From, Outfox is committing here, and I'm not sure about this. Already lost ah. some Dervish. Last one's gonna go down. Ah, this one's gonna go down. Thrum, take it out. Getting the leader from evil coming in here. Yeah, get get in there. Get in there. There we Ooh. go. <laughs> Almost lost them. That still was not in Outfox's favor, though, because he ended up losing all of his Dervish. He did lose a couple of Sapari, and he didn't really make a dent when it comes to the economy or the uh, army presence of Mixu's forces. 
And Mixu has a flock of Thrum dangerously outside of out Fox's bases here. There are Sentinels coming to answer, but it's going to take a while for those to build up. So for now, Mixu just has free reign. You can just split up, take up both moat lines, and not a whole lot that Mixu can do, or Outfox can do about it. Yeah, and you can see, actually, the... Oh, boy. This is... Especially with the passive that the Rams have, right? The bonus attack speed on kill. Just wiping out that line. All six Nine workers dead. Ooh. Nine Thrums well, against four Sentinels. In. Interesting matchup. The Zephyr are going to push them away overall. Mixu is... Cautious here. I don't know if Outfox wants to chase this though, especially if he comes across more enemy units. Oh, uh, but the, he does get one pick for his trouble so far. I mean, mainly just forcing the thrums out because there's nothing shooting up besides the thrums at this point. The Bone Stalkers all got wiped out. Like the Dervish did do their job in that respect. Yeah. I do want to point out that Mixu is now. Beyond the amount of uh, pyre needed for an ultimate. Oh, the Sentinel. They're biting off more than they can chew, Dom. That's one down already. Aerox oh. coming in. Oh. oh. <laughs> just, just avoided them. Those Sentinels are beyond lucky. Yeah, the uh, Aerox there. Had they connected, they would have had a fairly significant amount of damage and a slight splash that could have caused more than one casualty there. I mean, had they done that, all of the moat lines would have been vulnerable again. Like, the Thrums could have just gone back yep. in, killed everything, no problems. So yeah, that, that would have been, been really big. That would have been a massive blow if Outfox had lost those Sentinels. Yeah, absolutely. Outfox yeah. has sent his, essentially his entire force down to this northern side to work on the rocks near Mixu's base. Now Mixu, I don't think he's actually been able to scout this out. Ah, uh, never, maybe. He's positioning his scouted troops. It out. Yeah, I don't think he saw it, but he is positioning his troops in it. Interesting way here. I don't know if they scouted it, but they certainly he predicted it. <laughs> it might be. He must have. I mean, they haven't yeah. seen their units in a while. Like, looking around the map, their unit, the opponent's units aren't on one side. Well, there's a pretty obvious choice for where they could be. Well, done by Mixu, essentially negating that either by an amazing read or just by glancing at it for just a moment. Now, Outbox, does he commit is the question here? They do. Dropping the Heaven's Aegis. Uh -oh. The Aerox coming in? No, not gonna go oh, for it. Even with Deliver, it's still just about everything gone. That and was rough. That That's the oof. that is the second time that we've seen Outbox go for a Deliver after a, a bit of a half commitment there, and unfortunately the half measure really not working out is that Deliver from Evil didn't actually save many troops. Most of them died before mm, they could nope. even TP away. And not only that, now Mixu has four bases they don't have to worry about. They have. Oh, Lord. Significant economic advantage compared to, like, Outfox last game at least had the economic advantage going in. Like, in the mid game. Yeah, I mean, three bases to two. It's fine. Oh, now Mixu has two, four bases to three. Orton just caught out here on the south side of the map. And you can just take a look at the supply. Take a look at the army value on the right hand side of the screen. Literally double in Mixu's favor here. He's threatening to be a little bit careful, but army wise. In a straight-up fight, he wins this. Now, one chance they have is getting in before... Nope! The Thrums say nope. I was like getting in before the deploy, but no, the Thrums just provide too much extra firepower. And we have seen residents. this song thing. before, Dominic. We have heard its tunes, and it does not end well for Outfox. The commitment there from Zol and her great hunt, turning out the lights, taking down the bases, are the residents now. And Outfox, with a ton of Sentinels, but they can't do anything against the ground forces that Mixu has. Now, at this point, the Great Hunt Ooh. will... Is it going to be over before they get... Oh, it is. Okay, the Great Hunt only able to get rid of the third. And you can see a couple of Sentinels are going to get some more Thrum damage down, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. Honestly, Outfox is really is committing to Sentinels to the point that their opponent just doesn't have to worry about it. Right? Like, yeah, Thrums and... are a threat, but now... Now there's no resistance. Mixu can just walk wow. in. Like three by three ranks of resonance. He's exactly. committed to anti-air so hard. Yeah. Everything is anti-air and it's just, there's, the Mixu just gone, well, okay, then we'll just build ground. <laughs> That's fine. I was going to go for resonant underspine anyway. Oh boy. 
And you can see the bait there from Mixu. Just, yeah, yeah, come over here. Send uh, send your army. You can get my guys, it's fine. no problem. It's, it's fine, safe. Yeah, no, no, it's good. Totally, it's good. Yeah. Or residents. Free army, right here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Free candy. We've seen this before. It's a couple minutes later, but it's basically the same exact pressure. The same choking out the life of Outfox's forces as the resident line creeps farther and farther along. And Under just spines. for good measure, expanding on top of that. So this is yeah, we're this basically is uh... Mixu. I like. I'm trying to think of what they could do to get the lead to lose the lead, but right now it's just you know, Outfox is defending as best they can. The Wardens are doing a decent job, but the Underspines. The main thing is the Sentinels now is the Underspines are being distracted by them. But whether that that doesn't seem to be happening fast enough, as <laughs> one more expansion goes, Outfox is down to their main base, and that's it. Yep, that's it. One base to five. Now, that is an advantage I have not seen in quite a while. The Sentinels, again, just not effective. They don't have any anti-ground capability. They are purely air superiority here. And you can Which see, means, once again, yeah, he's going for Aerobore to take them out of the sky. This is so ingenious and evil. I mean, there's no way for Outfox to come back in this game. Certainly not using the Air Force. And the ground side playing as a jar is a little tricky. They don't have hollowers, so in terms of any kind of anti-resonant, like air is their best option. <laughs> that little squeal from the uh, symbiote there said. <laughs> well, I will say that Outfox went for a sneaky base here. If it's able to get mining in time, right? Producing some alloy, mm -hmm. getting some some of the economy back online, maybe Outbox finds some thread of hope in this game. But at this point, Mixu is nearly at capped supply. His army value is sky high, and he is at the footsteps of these bases that Outbox simply can no longer tread upon. Well, they, I think Outbox begs to differ. Wardens are coming through here. They have an Omnivore to contend with, but they avoid that, then they do have a moat line they can take out. Or symbiote line they can take out. So damage, damage is being done, though much greater damage being done to Outfox as Mixu finds the sneaky expansion. And that is going to go down without much issue. Same time Thrums in the moat line, in the main base, cutting off alloy production. Like This is team so far Outfox. actually not that bad for Outfox because Mixu has yet to take his main force and push farther. True, but I was about to say that the when it comes to things to counter the resonance, one one unit that would have worked really well it would have been the Sharu, but you need a lot of ether to make Sharu work. And Outfox does not have that. They they needed that expansion. They have no ether income in their main base. They needed this expansion to get any more advanced units. Basically any more ether units. They're stuck on Sapari. Unless they can get an expansion. Which that may not happen. Rough. Underspines coming in oh, on yeah, their own. Yeah. The Resonance not even pushing through. They're they're holding the line to stop any reinforcements coming back into the base. Yeah, meanwhile, Outfox's forces that were attacking have been thwarted by Mixer's defense back at home. And the siege continues. His underspines wreaking havoc, and that's gonna be the GG. 2-0, well played, and the game goes over to Mixu. Congratulations to Mixu. Taking the first round quite handily. At the same time, Santa beat Scruffy 2-0 as well. So for now, we're moving on to Magical against Mixu as our winner's semifinals match to watch. And yeah, that's up next. So I'm excited because Magical we've seen a lot of. Another strong player, very much a Mala enthusiast in the past. Yeah, Magical versus Mixu. That I, I'm trying to think. I'm sure we've seen that at least once or twice in the past. Um, however, overall, Mixu was kind of uh, playing a little bit less of a mortal as Magical came into his own at the late pre-alpha, early alpha phase. Uh, so it, it's not a matchup that I think if we have seen in the past that we've seen particularly commonly. Um, Certainly not in current Magical, because Magical, like you mentioned, Mixu. 
you know, they weren't pay playing as much end of pre-alpha, beginning of of alpha. Magical has been grinding. Yes. I I think, honestly, in my opinion, uh, even today, right, I would probably rate him as the best player when it comes to, like, master of all trades in terms of Immortal. Uh, I do think he has a preference for 2v2, so maybe he would sack up against one of our strongest players so far, Hydra, when it comes to 1v1. But he has grinded so much and optimized the game with some of our really heavy playtesters like Zard, Santa, etc. Uh, there's a reason why he's the first seed in today's tournament. Oh, yeah. No, that's... That is huge. That is a huge part of the whole thing. They are... I mean, they have been consistently... Yeah, they've been consistently getting first in the last... The last few 1v1 tournaments. And also last week with Hydraulics getting first place. <laughs> Uh, we saw Mixu obviously play Zol that last round. I'm assuming he's probably just going to stick to it here. I feel like there's, uh, no... Yeah, they are... Mixu doesn't strike me as the person to, to play some crazy wild card at this point. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I, would be I mean, the one time they... Him. Yeah, the one time they went, went for... I got really... Actually, kind of the opposite. Was the period where we had Zucal be really strong, and Mixu went, Nope, I am playing Masked Hunters. This is before Bone Stalkers, so yeah. But like, nope, I'm playing Max Thunders. I'm playing Mass Max Thunders. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so no mix. And it worked to a degree. To have... Yeah, that's true. Mixu just goes with they have their strategy, the thing they want to go for, and that's what they go for. So we are uh, getting into the Immortal Select here. Map, of course, will be Lost Province. And uh, Mala versus Zul. Okay. No surprises there. Both players playing kind of who we expect. Or exactly who we expect. Yeah, I uh, I wish we had the capability. It'll happen one day when we can sort of see the lifetime totals, right? Uh, the percentage played of Mala or, or, or both by Immortal and Faction. Wait, that's um, a planned thing? In general, I'm not sure. However, it's the kind of data that we really like as devs, right? So, yeah, I was, that would be great, because I've been having to try to mark it down some way that sort of works, but I don't have a system that really does the job. So right. If I, take it, care of that, that'd be brilliant. In the past, I have tried to do it manually. Um, not really, wasn't really worth it at the time. Uh, and, and even now, right, I think the game is no. just kind of too early for that. We don't have a solid matchmaking system, etc. But Also, we yeah. don't have, we have four Immortals, so a lot Pretty of people right. just kind of well, bounce between them. Yeah, yeah, that is a good point. There's, and, uh, there's preferences. Most most people only really have two or maybe three they play. But hey, some people will just bounce around all four. And that's that's the only data I find we can really get. Beyond that, trying to figure out, well, who do they play most? It's more of a gut feeling of, well, I've seen them play this this particular immortal a lot. I guess that's mm. who they play. So we've got Mixu in the top left and uh, Magic on the right, bottom right there. Mixu, what's a little bit late with this teapot? Maybe just shaking off some rust. Ultimately, I don't think it's going to be that big of a loss. However, maybe he decides to not even send the teapot into the main base and just kind of set up a perimeter around the pyre camp, which is something you typically see around the two minute mark from the pots. Uh, that's very loose. They're going to double check that there's an expansion. By the time they get in, they only okay. got 25 seconds before the turrets go online. But they're going to take full advantage of that. Pop in, check the check what's been built. Is there an altar? Yes. Well then, there you go. So it changed now. One altar. That's all they know. That's all they need to know. And now it's just a matter of what gets built. Which I mean, we kind of know the start is going to be Bone Stalker versus Mass Hunter. That's not <laughs> a whole lot of other options doesn't look like there's no sign of additional stuff second second altar being built after magical this is something they have considered to be a very strong play while mixing on the other hand going for their earlier bone stalkers yep and uh that supply affectation like you mentioned you're not going to be able to get the full amount instantly but of course they will be working it up 
Uh, and, and that is one of the reasons why I feel you might see commonly uh, multiple unit structures built pretty early across basically every immortal, every faction so far. And let's see, now it's the race have... to the center. One what? thing I'm looking for, I think Magical might be doing a strategy of get quickly get 32 or 32 supply worth of, so 16 mass hunters plus offering at around 3 minutes 30 seconds. That's been a build I've seen tossed around yeah. a little bit as a really strong build. And mm -hmm. that is quite possible. At the same time, Mixu does have essentially the opposite number, but mostly going for the underspines, because again, they're prepping for the mid-game timing push with underspine resonant. It's interesting that they're going for underspine again. I was, I was curious whether it was an adaptation into what we saw from Outbox, or if it was actually the strategy that they had planned, right? Uh, we'll Continue. see now. They've Combat around the pirate done camp. some practice. I think they planned it. Pyre taking my Mixu. Yep. And he didn't really lose much for it. Not at all. A little all. bit of health, but that's it. Now Mixu going for the third. Little. Very quick on the third, actually. This is. This is some classic Mixu. Like, they've, they've clearly started to get. Uh, you know, they're getting the rust off. They're remembering how they like to play. Drop that early third. Very, very. Like. Three minutes, thirty seconds, third. At the same time, those hunters are up. Sixteen. Yeah, and the uh, early. That's scary. That is very scary. Actually, that could be a major problem. It is, but actually, I, I do wonder. Mixu might be in danger here, but he's already answered with the underspine. He's got the Aravore that can eventually build up to the Omnivore. But oh, look at that! Magical is not going for the third. He's going straight to the natural. I don't think no the third has even been built. If they do, they clearly don't care. I mean, why bother the natural? Unfortunate for Mixu. Coming yeah, that's where his defense is. Well, yeah, but it's also under construction. Like, why go for it when it can be canceled? Right. Oh, oh man. Dropping. Oh man. Dropping that red harvest. Yeah, there's the commitment there from Magical. He sees the third base now. Like you mentioned, it's not even done, but the army from Mixu is just getting completely wiped. Offering is online. The early timing push for Magical swarming Mixu's expansions. Another they're offering popping. Mixu relying entirely on the tower to provide any kind of defense. It's just... More importantly, can they stop these masked hunters? Do they get reinforcements on the other side? Do get some bone stalkers, some other spines, some's a call as well. It'll be definitely handy, at least as a body blocker. It's just... Getting rid of the masked hunters one way or the other. They gotta decide if they're gonna keep this expansion. It's under heavy fire. Gotta decide and... quick. He's got a couple seconds for it. Uh, it's done. Nope, they're going for it. Okay. They're gonna try holding. Commits. Let's see. Underspines are in the back, but that's a lot of hunters, Dominic. Another set of underspines coming around the side. No, underspine attacks do slow. Oh, Zol coming in as well. The Avatar Zol does not last. Try to come in to help out just a little bit with... You now, Friday English bonuses. And that, that one is another one of the new abilities. It's Prophet of the Hunt. Basically, summons Zol as a unit, and all nearby units get extra speed boost. But there are no nearby units, so nothing out of speed boost. Yeah. I believe that. both uh, Zol and Orzum now have offensive capabilities when they're summoned as well, right? They do, yes. Yeah, like, Please. Zol is a straight-up unit. It's like 300 HP, well, including the overgrowth, and mm -hmm. reasonably fast. Like, works kind of like a Wraith, and the every fifth attack deals extra damage. And otherwise, Ooh, okay. it's about as hard as it's a call, but against everything. Mm -hmm. Not just against heavy. Nope. Oh. Relatively not offensive, just, just sets up to, you know, more Kittle every time something dies. A Kittle. No matter what it is. And, and of course, that oh Kittle. Oh boy, is that helpful. Which is the advantage. Yeah, that's really helpful. The turret, not much of a defense. The army being wiped out. And the chase is still on. The hunt is on. And Mixu is the prey. Magical. Really has free reign over these expansions now. Mixu might be able to bring most of his army back and defend. But maybe he's making a stand here. Well, they got the resident up. They got the resident down. They have Icor's coming in to help out. I mean, that is anti-light. So, it's a solid choice. It's just a matter of... And now they get positioning up. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, uh... Oof, that was a pretty devastating blow to Mixu's forces. 
His economy kind of has been chugging along throughout all this, so maybe he can come back in a couple of moments with some more units to defend. But Magical, he has a sizable army. The problem is, at this point, he's fairly low on Pyre and his army's around half HP, so if Mixu can actually stop the bleeding, he might come back here. Maybe. Maybe. That's... Oh, oh, if they bait in, though. Nice. That's a solid yes. They got... They've put Magical in an awkward position now. Magical doesn't seem to care, however, though. I don't think they do. I think they think it, oh, no, it's a resonance. It's resonance. Who cares about resonance? Resonance are weak. You know, it's like three resonance. That's a joke. I think yeah, it makes I mean, makes a difference. The reinforcements were enough, and Magical, meanwhile, hasn't been on a third base this entire time, but he has finally started it, and he's doing it while sniping the third of his enemy. Oh boy. Well, Magical's work is done. Regroup, reinforce, get some pyre back. But they caught the third. That's... They still have the advantage. Just heal up their forces, really. Is, if they can do that, they'll have essentially gotten away with that snipe with, like, you know, minimal losses. Yeah, there's a there's a teeny tiny window for Mixu because there are a lot of low health bars on the side of Magical. If Mixu can actually, like, convert these into kills, he can maybe come back. But the problem is, does Mixu actually know that? And will he take the aggressive Oof. option here? Okay. I don't, they may not have to. It might be given to nice. him. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a little bit awkward for Magical. He's committing again, Dom. This is dangerous. What? Are you serious? Okay, because there's enough resonance. This is a problem now. Even with this call sniping them, it's still a like the mass hunters Ooh. do not have a lot of time. It's the old resonance, the new baby. Oof. Back when Mixu played, resonance were super super strong, even if they weren't sieged, and he's he's reliving the glory days. It's, yeah, you're right. I mean, I you think well, hey, you know they got weakened, but. No, Mixu, Mixu's figuring out how to use them. Like, gotta be a bit careful. You, they are losing a few more than they would have, but it's giving them map control. It's giving them a presence. It's letting them push back, letting them retake their third. Now, Mixu. Yeah, this are they is. Gonna push in? Are they gonna push in? They're gonna snipe. From I feel like Mass this is Hunter. nice for Mixu, even if he doesn't push in. And we see the siege malls have been actually set up by Magical, so maybe a little bit of a defensive barrier. Uh. He has yet to get a completely mining base on his third expansion, so Magical is actually falling behind when it comes to raw economy per second, per minute here. Not, and for that reason, I really would hope Mixu sticks to the work, the current apparent plan of just set up, siege up, find oh. some defensive position, but now I'm Magical in the back lines! Magical is not going to let him. Magical is just going to destroy that natural worker line and no defense from Mixu. One survives to tell his tale. However, his allies have all fallen and the base under siege, the Ether Mall, definitely goes down here. One under spine might be enough to force them away as surely there will be reinforcements coming in here. Uh, but no, the it hasn't not. happened yet, though. A couple of resonants are on the way, but that's about it. And right. they are not the fastest unit here. No, they're not. The main saving grace seems to be that Mixu has got rid of the siege mods, but now it's just resonance, resonance on route way on both sides. We have a no man's land. This is interesting. <laughs> Magical goes for yet another. Yet oh, another no. symbiote line is dead. Yeah. Oh boy, that sucks. Plus, Mixu was going countries. to take heavy units. Those ether mods being taken out is really devastating. What uh, oh, they have to work okay, the Icors are up at least. At least it's mass mass hunters where Icors do do some work. Mass mass hunters do do some work. Or sorry, Icors. A lot yeah. of a. Uh, Rhyming there. <laughs> well, rocks are being aggroed by uh, Mixu. The response from Magical is there. Is this going to be a big fight? Nope. Doesn't look like either team wants to commit. But the teapot may be uh, too far. Does seem to make it out for now. Mixu does have their third up. They do. They have been able to. Chwon K. Bloodbounds co incoming. Bloodbounds. Yeah, that's interesting. The Omnivore is at least up this time around. Resonance on top of that. Bloodbound. That feels really committing to the Rass. And whoa! Nah. GG called. What? 
Did this Furious there? Makes it maybe he just had through? enough. I don't think it was a devastating position that he was in. I don't think he was out of the no, game just yet. So I'm curious even. to see what the players think of that. Yeah, that was interesting. Oh, oh, I see. Behemoth is no ant here to deal with them. That might have been why. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm checking out your stream now. So the uh, player saw that the writing was on the wall, so to speak. Looks like. Uh, or, what did, or did Mixu disconnect? Well, I'd have been a disconnection, yeah, because Mixu's currently out of the lobby of ours and not responsive, so possibly he might have had some kind of error, disconnection, or emergency, as typically the game does not auto GG for you if you disconnect, right? No, it doesn't. Um, Although so it had a bit of crash, yeah, like, like there's no... Almost magical disconnected, just to make, or GG just to make it work. Ah! <laughs> that wasn't red GG, wasn't it? No, it was oh, a blue shoot. GG. Oh, blue was it? Okay, never mind. Oh, yeah, right, because no, no, no. the red GG comes yeah. afterwards to people. Yeah, we didn't have an open thing. We just okay. asked the players, what's up? Okay, that is game one. Uh, magical one, game one, yeah. Okay. Guess it must have been the behemoth there. All right. Interesting, though. That was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then all of a sudden in the flash, it was over, right? Well, uh, I mean, hyper committing to ground based siege army. Behemoths come in, would break that, and not a whole lot yeah. to stop it. So. Not, not enough time, right? Because Mixie was no. current, like constantly under harass. Well, that was the thing, especially early on. That was the biggest thing Magical had was that they were forcing Mixu to throw a trickle of units at them, mm -hmm. which doesn't work. Let's see what the uh, response is from Mixu in game number two. Or, or some, or some mirror. All right. This is mega troll. They haven't locked in yet. I, I doubt it. No, they locked it in. What? What right. witchcraft is this? Double orzum after the update with the pillar and the <laughs> this orzum slamming a jam and then towers everywhere. Oh. We got foundations everywhere. We got or like Orzum currently has a uh, particularly exploitable ability that we have gentlemen's agreement. Oh, fatal error. Uh, so we will get the observer back in just really quickly, folks. Um, but yeah, we're gonna keep on double Orzum because it seems like the players themselves didn't have a problem getting into that game. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious to see what they do because that is not something that I would have in a million years guessed. Uh, as a response from either of these players, especially after Magical just won as best as well as they did, <laughs> but you know, I mean, you can change when you win too. There's, there's yeah, maybe nothing. there's a maybe some like messaging between them, right? They just PM'd each other, like, hey, by the way, you want to Orzum here? Yeah, bro, let's do it. Your Orzum's trash, I've got this. Um, who is to say? <laughs> who knows? But hope the players quit out so we can actually get restarted. We're just waiting on the players here. Uh, unfortunately, let's be Arn Alpha crashes. They happen. Uh, speaking of which, I think we actually might have a stability patch coming soon, TM, um, which would be super, super exciting to kind of see more consistency with the. Because these are break the game weeklies, right? So the idea is that we yeah. want to see, like, we don't want to encourage breaking the game in the context of. It's a miserable experience, but we do want to like test the limits and see what's broken, right? Right. Uh, and then as we identify that, it's like, okay, cool. Like this strategy is clearly broken in some way, uh, or this, you know, is going to cause crashes. So let's try and move on past that. Um, but yeah, I am excited to see stability patches if we can get them in to kind of keep the playing field a little bit more, uh, what's the word, like sanctimonious, I suppose. Yeah, I expect that'll happen. That's usually been the pattern. Like, there's a bunch of content and then stability mm -hmm. for a while. And yep. that's... That is, don't, I see no reason to not think that's going to happen this time. Yeah, yeah. And when the major content that we've gotten now now is the Immortal Reworks, and we're pretty much there. Or they're mostly in for the Immortals we have currently. Um, 
Now, I do I want to mention players, something, Dominic. No, the players are ignoring us. Well, I don't think the players are ignoring us. I think we are in a world where they might not have second monitors or didn't uh, check them. And we might have to go to a different game because Mixu and Magical are clearly locked in a heated battle at the moment. <laughs> yeah, there's just not another game to go to. So I think we'll just go to a quick break. All right. And then we'll be back then, uh, once the next game is in. Yep, just wait a couple minutes, folks. We'll be right back uh, with an update from Mixu v. Magical.